Hey guys, I am the Comics Kid 2099. I tried to record this about two minutes ago and uh, the camera start kind of fell over and then when I was trying to steady it, I pushed some buttons, I don't know what I did. So anyway, this is Mark II of a rant that I'm doing on the way home from an errand that I tried to run. Uh, for your information, I was not able to run the errand. I was able to do it online and I did not know that. Last night, Thursday, the 23rd, I watched the first half of the pilot miniseries for the modern Battlestar Galactica. This is not to be confused with the actual ongoing television series. This is not to be confused with the Caprica miniseries or the Razor miniseries. This was the very beginning of the Edward James Olmos Battlestar Galactica. I watched the first half of the miniseries. And before I get into this rant, I want to say, one, I actually enjoyed what I saw. Uh, like I said, I only saw half of it, so I can't do like a full in-depth review or anything, and I'm probably not going to. Second of all, I'm not really sure if I can call this a rant because I'm not angry. I'm more puzzled or confused. I don't understand this need to do grim and gritty reboots of anything. You look at something like Battlestar Galactica, for those of you who don't know, it was actually a TV series, I want to say in the very late 70s, early 80s, it was a TV series. Basically, it was a response to Star Wars. It was a very lighthearted, very fun, adventurous series, not very dark at all, uh, something you would expect from the 1980s. I want to apologize, this camera has cut off my mouth because of the way that it's, okay, they're going that way, because of the way that it's tilted. Eh. Okay, there we go. So anyway, original Battlestar Galactica, very fun and lighthearted, uh, not in any way similar to the new Battlestar Galactica. The new Battlestar Galactica, much darker, much grittier, and I don't mean that in the typical, oh, grim and gritty as a buzzword, to be synonymous with like Frank Miller's Dark Knight Returns. I mean that it was physically grittier. Like the ship looks like it's falling apart at times. You've got more blood, you've got sweat. It looks like a grittier world. And it comes down to this. I don't understand who, who was it that said, do you remember that old TV show Battlestar Galactica that was really fun and lighthearted and had a goofy dog robot thing? What if we made a really dark, really depressing remake of it? And at the end of the day, I'm not sure how many fans of the new Battlestar Galactica were even aware that there was an original Battlestar Galactica in the 70s or 80s. And I'm wondering, did they gain anything by calling this new show Battlestar Galactica? Usually you might have something where it's like, for example, in 1975, when Chris Claremont came on the X-Men after Lynn Wein and Dave Cockrum had done Giant Size X-Men Issue 1, he basically just, well, he was running with concepts that Lynn Wein and Dave Cockrum had created, but you look at that and then you look at the previous run of X-Men, and he's only keeping one or two of the characters from the original run of X-Men, you have to wonder why on earth would you even do X-Men if you weren't even planning on keeping most of those characters. Well, in that case, it's name recognition. You had people who used to read the original X-Men and they were going to keep reading because of that name. But if you created an entirely new property, you wouldn't have that existing fan base. I don't think you have that with Battlestar Galactica. You don't have an existing fan base that watched the original show and then decided to watch this new show. I think most of the people who watched the new rebooted Battlestar Galactica were either unaware that there was originally a Battlestar Galactica or they were aware but they just didn't care. They were just watching a brand new thing. And this sort of thing is not exclusive to Battlestar Galactica. I know that uh, Once Upon a Time is a show on I believe ABC and it's basically uh, all modern fairy tales, well not modern, all old fairy tales live in the modern world and they've recently started a spin-off series called Once Upon a Time in Wonderland which is like a really dark grim and gritty Alice in Wonderland take where Jafar from Aladdin, the Disney Aladdin, 
is the bad guy. And I have to wonder, did these people even watch the original Alice in Wonderland and the original Aladdin? And if so, what possessed you to want to do a dark, grim and gritty version of Alice in Wonderland meets Jafar from Aladdin? Now, I understand that Alice in Wonderland itself, it was a very whimsical tale, but it wasn't exactly light. There was some, I don't want to say dark elements, there was definitely some uh, not exactly childlike. I don't know what I'm trying to say. The original story by Lewis Carroll was a fairy tale, basically, a mo you know, modern for the time fairy tale, and it was something that adults could read to, kill to children and, you know, children could probably read it themselves, but it wasn't exclusively a light-hearted fairy tale, I guess is what I'm trying to say. Having said that, I still think it's really strange, like when the Sci-Fi Channel decides to do a weekly miniseries thing called Tin Man, and it's a revamp of The Wizard of Oz, except that it's grim and gritty. Uh, I don't understand why they would want to do that. I, I guess that's... I don't have a conclusion to this video. I don't really have anything to say here. I don't have enlightening thoughts about why they do what they do. I'm genuinely confused as to why they would think that this... And maybe it works. Maybe if the Ronald Moore Battlestar Galactica from the mid-2000s, maybe if that series had a brand new name like Space War or something like that. I don't know. I'm not good at coming up with names. Maybe it wouldn't have sold as well as if they called it Battlestar Galactica. Maybe there really is a built-in audience that will only watch this show if they recall that there was an older show called Battlestar Galactica. I know in movies, like 90% of the movies that come out are either sequels or remakes or reboots. So maybe there is something to this where in television they get to do these grim and gritty reboots of older shows and it turns out to be hugely successful. Let me know what you guys think. I still am just, this has been a very scatterbrained video. I, I don't understand it. I don't understand this idea of let's take something that was very fun and lighthearted and let's take out all the fun and all the lighthearted and let's make it really depressing, really sad, really angsty and then make lots and lots of money. I, I don't understand it. But apparently it's working for them because I don't see this fad ending anytime soon. So that's all I have here. I hope that you guys liked this video even though it is very scatterbrained. I will see you guys tomorrow with some other kind of video. So until then, I'll catch you guys later. Have a great day.